Hey guys, Kevin Cage back with another cryptocurrency update. Welcome to the channel. Like and subscribe if you're serious about the digital asset space. And let's get right into it today. One take and uncut. This is going to be quite the video. So I am urging you, please watch the entire thing, specifically the last few minutes. I want to bring some points home. And if you have not seen the previous two videos that I uploaded yesterday, please check those out as well. All right. So all of this ties together and I have some important points today as always. So we're going to be talking about SWIFT again, understanding that it's roughly, if not more with, uh, of course, inflation today, $5 trillion per day in transactions, about 250 businesses or business days, excuse me, per year. So that's roughly $1.25 quadrillion per year. This is going to be absolutely massive. We're going to be talking about Cybos a little bit from 2018, tying together why XRP is best positioned. And of course, the XRP ledger itself to be the ledger of the internet of value. Now, as we can see, of course, NACHA, N-A-C-H-A, King Solomon, many researchers have been trying to point to this and nobody really talks about it. Of course, now we are thanks to some additional news lately, but Ripple Labs joins the NACHA Alliance back in 2014. Payments Innovation, Alliance, Connect, Engage, Transform. Now, who is NACHA? Why are they big? Well, again, guys, they're, again, helping this ongoing effort back to the back in the day to support and develop the Ripple protocol is what they kind of call it with RippleNet, the permission blockchain, and the next repeat ledger's open source in the ecosystem. Ripple Labs joins them. And as we can see, founded in 1974, reminds me just like Swift back then, archaic technology and trying to help update this digital transformation. NACHA is one of the country's premier industry groups representing over 11,000 financial institutions. Similar to Swift, guys, 10,000, 11,000 clients and oversees the entire ACH, again, automated clearinghouse, the electronic network, that's the backbone of the United States payments. Again, nothing to see here. I'm sure it's just another coincidence. We can see this payment stack. Ripple, the bottom, the foundation of all of this. Message routing, of course, with RippleNet, clearing, reconciliation, we get it. And then the settlement infrastructure with finality, the one-time transfer that does go over the XRP ledger via XRP. If you decide to tokenize another asset or send IOUs, that's all in good. That's great. Guess what? XRP is still needed on the XRP ledger. It is the native digital asset. It will forever be there. Is that finite supply to, you know, for spam, spam prevention, excuse me, and potentially even the fastest means of settling, of course, which we already know, right? The payment channels you can create. There's so many benefits to the XRP ledger, the DEX that many people are not talking about. It goes way deeper than XRP. It goes to the XRP ledger itself, its inherent capabilities, and the interledger protocol. All right. RippleNet, of course, is going to be a lot more complex than we actually realize. But for these, you know, for the sake of the video and for the sake of NDAs and privacy of these companies and financial institutions and transactions, we're just trying to keep it nice and simple. All right. So again, Ripple resides at the bottom of this payment stack, serving as a platform for FIs to develop and transact and build on, but as invaluable as the technology that allows a smarter and more inclusive system. And this is an old article, guys. Remember, financial inclusion, level playing field, open landscape. There's billions that are unbanked, tons of money out there. The movement of money is facilitated by rules and guidelines that ensure proper risk management. Luckily, with XRP, there's no counterparty risk anymore, fairness, and industry-wide standards. Nacha and Swift provide invaluable insight and experience and are well positioned to help guide new payment technologies and standards. Wow, I wonder what that could be referring to. Of course, it's probably referring to many things, but think of this new payment technologies and standards. Standards, of course, with messaging, even the ISO, but that's not solving the problem of pre funded accounts, and they know what's on the timeline. We've seen the timeline, it's still going to settlement. Of course, ISO and the migration to help messaging is great, but we still need the settlement infrastructure, finality at the core ledgers of these central banks. Notice that we're all building now the central banks of the world, central bank digital currencies. Will they be fractionally backed to a certain degree by gold? Yes, I believe so in the future. It'll be a version of the gold standard, not a 100% gold standard, because if it was 100% backed by gold, the central banks would have to be transparent with how much gold they hold. <laughs> That's not going to be the case. All right. I do believe that oil and the energy sector will support this, but they need to have liquidity to this whole ecosystem. XRP is not just going to be for on-demand liquidity. Try looking in the world of trade finance and try looking into the derivatives market where we have full-time engineers due to the Logos acquisition building DeFi products, decentralized finance products. We can build options, swaps, futures. This goes so much deeper than people are looking, yet you're only looking on CNN for your news. 
And when they're saying, look at Bitcoin, you're missing the other hand entirely. This is for the payments problem. Is there going to be use cases for other assets? Yeah, potentially. Could Chainlink completely dominate in terms of, you know, de decentralized Oracle market? Absolutely. And really help with smart contracts and trust and viable information? Yes. There can be and will be more than one winner in this space. I just believe that the XRP ledger itself will serve as kind of the backbone infrastructure in tandem with ILP and XRP as the native digital asset in this financial transformation and future that is coming. And I believe we'll see something very exciting by end of year, whether it's news or potentially massive price spikes. We already know, and I'm going to go over this in this video, so stick around. The Federal Reserve of Dallas admitting to manipulation currently in a nascent market. Time and time again, this happens. We saw in the 90s, there was what a two-year period of price going down the news saying, stay out of it, a scam, tulip bubble. And all these internet stocks, guess what? You can look back at the data, and it was the highest accumulation by institutional investors to date. By the, and the price was manipulated and low, staying with teen, you know, between a certain type of range, so nobody was paying attention to it. This is happening time and time again. Why is it happening again? Well, because it's worked several times before. This is another transformation of wealth. There's very few people that actually had the foresight when they bought Amazon early on because they were scared and they said it was volatile, nothing's guaranteed, and they sold their Amazon. Do you know how many people actually held their stock? for hundreds of dollars, if not even $2,000. Now, I understand with different organizations, there's stock splits and things of that nature, like MoneyGram, but I'm just talking about the actual principle behind it. All right? So now, really quick, just so as, since we're talking about Nacha here, is right here. So King Solomon sharing this again with Nacha itself. Survey illustrates invoicing portal process is fragmented. This just came out May 6th, 2020. And we can see here, Fixius, again, this is kind of what's going to be used by Nacha to help improve this type of interface for interoperability you can see these issues 93 percent of vendors have customers with portals 60 percent you know manual data data entry highly inefficient guys 400,000 customers etc all right so just one little use case that's where fixius comes in in response to these friction points remember xrp and ripple's whole mission their statement is said to allow money to move and remove the friction just basically allow value to move as frictionless as information does today Fixius to facilitate the digital transformation of fragmented processes. We can see systemic platform for interoperability, blah, blah, blah. Now notice the goal is to reduce friction in manual processes by leveraging distributed ledger technology by verifying data. So again, DLT is going to have more than one use case. It's not always going to involve value transfer. Of course, there's going to be you know benefits to record keeping as well, and it's distributed. There's not a central point of authority or failure. We get it. But I thought it was interesting, again, leveraging DLT. We know that well over 50% of banks are already utilizing DLT and experimenting upon it, thanks to the billions of dollars backing it. And of course, Ripple, as we know, is Goldman Sachs, or a lot of the companies that are utilizing Ripple and are first investors in Ripple are backed by Goldman Sachs and some of the biggest groups in the world, and Jason Horowitz, of course, Morgan Stanley, BNY. We talk about it time and time again. So again, Fixius leverages blockchain and DLT to reduce fraud and risk. We're going to have many use cases. I'm not saying this is specifically XRP. What I'm saying is they're going to be leveraging more and more DLT. And this is just one example for the messaging layer. Okay. Keep in mind, we are looking at the payment stack. And guess what? King Solomon, knowing Nacha very well, even you know posted the same picture beneath today and tomorrow and saying today. And now it just says ripple, basically saying it's inevitable. We've shown you the, again, the NTT data type of roadmap that they have. 2020 was marked as kind of the first pivotal year that we were supposed to see, okay? And we are not even talking about capital markets yet. I'm just saying this is revolutionary. This is going to be very, very big. And do not be surprised if there's just simply going to be, you know, a one day or, you know, a one month bull run when this finally occurs. It's trickle, trickle, trickle flood. One of the biggest asset managers, custodians of the world, State Street said, this is what's going to happen. Everything's becoming tokenized. It's going to be a flood. But initially, very, you know, little movements and kind of signs for this to come. And, you know, this is not financial advice. Of course, this is my opinion combined with facts. But please do your own research. And I hope you can respect why I am so bullish with this. All right, let's keep going. So stay with me right here. XRP Yo-Yo putting out some great information. So the future of Swift with cross-border payments. Again, Swift, we've already shared $1.25 quadrillion a year, give or take. I think it's, you know, a little more now, but $5 trillion per day in transactions, 250 businesses, business days per year. So you can kind of do that math. 
right? Now, this is the volume of electronic payments. And you have to understand, there's other electronic payments besides the SWIFT legacy network using their correspondent banking partners. And you can kind of think of, you know, CLS, continuous link settlement. There's so many more behemoths in the space, okay? SWIFT, NACHA, just one little piece of this, you know, global equation. So what's interesting here, this is Cybos, their annual event, by the way, it's canceled for this year, by the end of year. This was in Sydney, Australia. And basically what I want to show you, key requirements for a future cross-border correspondent banking payments model. So we have settlement, extra P checks that off with, you know, the extra P ledger itself and RippleNet. And even if R3 uses Corda Settler, okay, let's just pretend extra P is that bridge asset, or maybe the XRP ledger essentially as that underlying backbone, that protocol. Okay. The ledger IOP can be the protocol. All right. So we have interoperability with IOP check predictability. Yes. Because you can, can, you know, basically get your rates, you're clearing your messaging, your FX conversions, know who owes who, you know, how much the fee will be trans, you know, it's transparent. Okay. Transparency, ubiquity. It's common everyday use. Everybody's integrated already. know, the top 50, you know, banks and governments are already integrated. You don't have to get, you know, all 10,000, 20,000 of the biggest banks. You really just need the top 100 or, you know, the top 50 and it's game over availability. Yes. Easily. If you look at who's acquiring and who's, you know, connected, you can already see it. Liquidity efficiency, so, so many things I could, you know, kind of spin some crazy conspiracy theories or speculation with you, but you can understand that liquidity begets liquidity. We've heard this from many executives. They want XRP to be as liquid as a G10 currency. If, you know, Swift GPI ever plugged in somehow to the XRP ledger, be it, you know, R3 Corda or, you know, any other application or permission blockchain database, data, database, it's basically just game over. You can understand how fast the flywheel effect can take over. The more liquid asset is, the cheaper it is, the tighter the spreads, the easier it is to find a partner. And of course, when everything's tokenized, it's going to be much more than just central bank digital currencies being bridged. Hopefully you guys get what I'm saying. If you're a newcomer, I'm sorry if I'm talking high level, um, but this is kind of still low level for a lot of the veterans. All right. So again, guys, and also this woman makes a good point and they kind of talk in this video in Cybos, and you know, they say there's not going to be cryptocurrency is not going to be the one global payment currency or things of that nature. And I agree. But what about a global bridge asset that works behind the scenes with the Internet of Value protocols? All right. Remember, we we're just talking about the actual payment stack right here. That's something to consider, guys. So Internet value protocols is going to be multiple. Who knows? There's going to be multiple groups, but I'm just thinking kind of interledger. Now, what is the central bank digital currency or other global payments currencies? You know, their walled gardens, their settlement tokens. They can be used by, you know, they're going to be used by these banks, these financial institutions, these governments. But why, you know, what if they operated on top of the XRP ledger in some manner or even just went over at one time briefly, just like RippleNet utilizes with ODL, on demand liquidity ODL? I just say ODL now for fun. What if it does operate or go over the XRP ledger one time in tandem with the interledger protocol IOP, perhaps sourcing it one giant pool of XRP available for all the source on demand liquidity from rather than wasting trillions of dollars holding reserve accounts around the globe as just in case money due to their clunky architecture because they cannot settle with finality instantaneously. There is no question, and this is factual, DLT infrastructure will be and is crucial. Now, the other questions are, will cloud play a role? Maybe there will be one pool of XRP liquidity. Would an international body or standard come up? Would the BIS, the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund kind of set guidelines? Hint, hint. I'm just trying to get some gears turning, guys. All right Now, this is still speculative. You should not invest based off you know pure speculation. All right? It's, you know, investing and gambling, investing, you gather as much knowledge as you can, you, you know, assess the risk, you de-risk, you make plans and you go accordingly. I only invest money that I am willing to lose. All right. When I invest, I just set and forget it. I pretend it's not even a part of my net worth. I don't worry about it. I'm not looking at it every single day because I understand it is a seed that I plant to grow. All right. All right. Now let's get into the good information. I know that was a huge, huge rant, but hopefully that, you know, you found something valuable in it. All right. And another thing that's just coming to mind with the Bitcoin having guys, I saw Ashish Birla put a tweet out and he's of Ripple and he just said something, you know, kind of comical is a good analogy. He said, ice cream company stock does not surge in anticipation of summer, just like Bitcoin should not surge in anticipation of having. 
you know, essentially saying it's already priced into the market. We get it. Now, sometimes, you know, weeks later after the halving, we can see some huge volatility. And we'll see, guys. I think the market, you know, in cryptocurrency is already volatile. But as we start to go up and after these short bull runs, which are explosive, because we know that bear markets can last years, and then the bull run itself is very, very short and just explosive, the only people that make money are the ones that buy during the bear market in a hold. You set and forget and don't worry about it. Those are the people that make money because when the exchanges, when everything fires up and, you know, everything's 2xing and doubling and even going up in multiples or factors of 10, the exchanges sometimes just go down. There's too much traffic. The throughput is just too much for them. And it might be, you know, there is there man manipulation? In my mind, yeah, absolutely. I don't know who's, you know, guilty of it, but I just, in my mind, you know, there are whales that exist. All right. So here we go. So we talked about XRP, Yo Yo, and Swift. Talked about the key requirements. Another thing I wanted to show you, this is really interesting, guys. Sometimes there's just too many coincidences. And yes, this is a real document. It is on the IMF.org, just like the International Monetary Fund, right? Really, really weird. Now, this is back in 2004. Many of you have already seen this, so I'm going to be brief. Basically, XRP is listed over 400 times. But look at this acronym they use for XRP, talking about exchange rates between countries and their currencies. XRP up here, exchange, so exchange, rate, peg. So this has potentially been in the works for a long time. Some type of, not necessarily an SDR, a special drawing rights, but some type of, you know, national peg or automatic liquidity in the system. Really, really interesting. Now it could be pure, pure coincidence, but I do think it's really funny. Um, and I was just kind of playing the other day on Twitter, asking people to come up with as many acronyms as possible for XRP, whether it's, you know, extreme recovery plan x maybe for the cross border and then rapid payments of course you know x ripples david schwartz kind of emphasizes xrp x represents because it's not owned by any country just like gold's ticker is x because it's not owned by any country au the elemental you know off the elemental chart so x and then rp could be ripples or rapid payments or x rapid you know you can kind of get creative but i just wanted to show that so again Monetary regime classifications larger and more developed countries found this to be interesting, especially during times that they're discussing, you know, you know, debt types of plans for, you know, the poorest nations during this pandemic. I um, just wanted to get the gears turning. So, I mean, it's listed all over next to these countries exchange rate peg. So understand that the conversion rates between two currencies today are always fluctuating. And by the time that payments are sent, it takes so many days to send. The rates can change entirely when they're you know ready to switch up. And you know it could be favorable half the time, but the other half it is not. We need something standard. If we have a liquid bridge asset with high liquidity, we can basically settle these currencies and convert them instantaneously with FX rates. And you know how much it's going to cost you initially before even clicking for the transaction. And this is going to basically be massive for financial institutions, banks, governments, you name it. Okay. All right, I was just looking at the documents. Now check this out, guys. This is on coil.com. Again, I am Legion, guys. Please support him. Do not send me any tips. Send I am Legion some tips for his great work and research. I love when he puts these things together. This article is really short and sweet, but I wanted to show you. So again, I am Legion. You can follow him on coil.com, C-O-I-L.com. I'll put this link in the top of the video description. So again, back in the day, we know Ripple. Lian Lian International joins RippleNet to provide faster payments to China. We also know, of course, that Ripple's met with the central banks of China. Um, they're highly connected and funny enough. Now, China and the People's Bank of China is rolling out a digital currency, a soft rollout. All right. Is there more to this that, you know, than meets the eye? I think so. All right. So we can kind of go through this. Did Amex American Express, another RippleNet partner, just crack the code on China's domestic clearing market? So we can understand this. Back in 2018, the secret sauce... So it looks like here, as we can see, a 50-50 joint venture between American Express and Lian Lian Group, which was set up in 2017, again, to help basically take over this market. They both have vested interests and they want to work together. So again, even Lian Lian completed more than $2.9 billion in cross-border transactions. 2017, People's Bank of China opened up card clearing applications, Amex and Visa. Again, Visa is essentially backing Ripple as well. They acquired Earthport and they specifically have said that they're teaming up with Ripple to kind of replace the Swift network. It is very low key and you really have to do some research to look into this. And you also have to look at, you know, kind of LinkedIn and see, you know, what headhunters are switching. It's just like chess pieces moving. It's absolutely amazing. So American Express puts $125 million in and partners with Chinese mobile payments company Lian Lian to license Serve. So we can see another type of partnership here. Lian Lian, their service. 
you know, inexpensive, fast, secure payments, money transfer service from merchants and consumers around the world. So international payments, we can see their strategic partners as well. You know, Apple, Apple Pay, no surprise. Now, first, Global and Lian Lian Pay complete their first phase of beta testing on WeChat. Now, this is another huge group. I know there's been tons of talks about them, essentially just showing you how deep the rabbit hole goes with RippleNet. And of course, we know Tencent developed by them. You can see it's a Chinese multi-purpose messaging, social media, and mobile payment platform with over 1 billion monthly active users. Very big. Again, WeChat has been described as China's app for everything. Sure, that's you know just another coincidence. Lian Lian Group is the first enterprise group successfully obtaining the Thailand payment license as a foreign funded company. So again, and now look at this connection. BNP, Paribas, Paribas, again, a huge, massive bank, I, be, I believe based out of France. And look, now they're connected with RippleNet's partner, Lian Lian Pay, to partner on e-commerce business in China. Pay attention. Cross-border payments such as remittances and then e-commerce will be massive. These are payments issues, and this is where I believe XRP is going to play a fundamental role in the near future. All right, so we can see their partners. We can see it's expected to see cashless payments reach 45 trillion US dollars by 2021. This trend is continuing to grow. You know, it's just right in front of your eyes, guys. Now, look at this. This is the last point. World Pay Partners, Lian Lian Pay for payout services in China. World Pay is already a RippleNet partner. They were acquired by FIS, which we've done a huge video on, all related to Fidelity. Guess what? FIS, a RippleNet partner. So basically, they're all just RippleNet partners working together, and they have RippleNet capabilities. And the biggest thing about RippleNet, since it's software-based, is with a click of a button, they can utilize XRP, and they've made this known. Okay? All right. So right here, WorldPay, global leader in payments, partnered with Lian Lian Pay, Chinese or China-based mobile payment service provider, to expand its settlements. Settlements, guys, and payout capabilities to include the Chinese yuan. Right, not the renminbi. You know, this is their kind of other currency, cross currency use. Now, let's go right here. As we can see, World Pay was recently bought out by U.S. fintech company Fidelity National Information Services (FIS), who are also partners of Ripple. Therefore, since FIS was already partnered with Ripple before acquiring World Pay, now that World Pay is partnering with Amazon Pay, it also logically seems like you know to be an indirect step of Amazon towards Ripple. Now we already know you know Apple Pay. There's no question, but I just wanted to show you that little speculation that's been around for quite a while. All right, next up, Kuwait Bank kickstarts RippleNet Power direct money transfer service to Turkey. So I'm going to be brief. I know people have covered this. The Kuwait Finance House, again, RippleNet partner, has expanded its international payment remittance services using RippleNet to Turkey. Again, we know what the Turkish lira, I believe. It is another corridor. All right. Next up, so Coinbase's chief legal officer, we know Brian Brooks, is leaving the crypto exchange of Coinbase to become the second in command at the U.S. Office of Comptroller of the Currency, OCC. And again, Treasury, U.S. Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin, best buds with one of the board of board members, board of directors on Ripple, Craig Phillips, of course. Stephen Mnuchin used to be, what was it, chief technology officer over at Goldman Sachs. All right. And then you have to understand that Craig Phillips has... 30 plus years of experience, kind of doing similar roles in hedge fund management at not only Morgan Stanley, but BlackRock. So he left, went there. And then of course, Ripple's Robbie Michnik left to go to Ripple. I mean, to go to BlackRock, he left Ripple to go to BlackRock to become lead of blockchain. I'm sure, it's all just a coincidence, but to me, it's, you know, chess pieces moving and I'm foreseeing this. All right. So right here, talking about this, we know that Steve Mnuchin kind of appointed him. Awesome. All good and great. Now, what's relevant with this? You can see U.S. banking regulators suggest federal licensing framework for crypto firms. Now, remember, the person that basically created the framework for even the bit license of New York, one of the most strict states in the United States for cryptocurrency regulation, Ben Losky, left to go to Ripple. I'm sure it's just another coincidence, guys. Why, you know, the biggest hedge funds in the world in trillions of dollars are backing and looking to basically support this type of new protocol and standard. I'm sure it's all just coincidental. All right, Brian Brooks, again, a key bank regulator may open or may be open to allowing crypto companies to be licensed as FIs on a national rather than state by state level. Really, really cool. Um, I know people have gone over this extensively. I'm not going to speculate too much, but you get where I'm going. All right, next. This is what I found to be really interesting as well, and then we'll call it a day. I know it's been a long talk. 
So right here, King Solomon, XRP underscore owl. Anyone want to explain why the Globalization Institute Federal Reserve would issue cryptocurrency market reaction to regulatory news? Ladies and gents, we are in the right place at the right time. Talk about manipulation. XRP is in here. So guys, this is released by the cryptocurrency market reactions to federal you know, regulatory news. We can see their names right here. Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas. Now, as we briefly look at this, because I know people cover this extensively, <clears throat> Basically just saying that, you know, Bitcoin and, you know, other cryptocurrencies specifically do not move the same manner and, you know, kind of their movement is less. And this is basically admitting an admission that XRP is highly suppressed amongst other assets. And it's really, really funny to kind of witness that. But if you look at the volumes and you understand what's going on, you know, you can see Bitcoin whales, you know, you understand what the Bitcoin mi mining, it's, you know, millions, if not, you know, 14 million or so per day in selling or, you know, per week, per month. It's, it's ridiculous how suppressed these assets are. And guess what else is suppressed? Precious metals. So when people are eventually leaving the stock market, even if it continuously pumps up thanks to quantitative easing, which we know is artificial and fake entirely, people are going to be looking, the smart investors, not the sheep, all right, are going to be looking to invest in the asset classes that have been suppressed and low for the past few years. Guess what those are? Physical metals, precious metals, and crypto assets. Now, many cryptos will be, you know, destroyed entirely, but the most legitimate, I think maybe a good 100 will serve real purposes and the ones that survive and serve a purpose are going to explode. Not financial advice, but as you can see, the trillions of dollars sitting on the sidelines that have to be tokenized along with everything else that is not tokenized today, real estate, you know, properties, um, you know, car titles. I hope you can understand how big this is going to be. You can even tokenize yourself. You can tokenize companies, stocks, you name it. Okay, this goes very, very deep. Now, this is also a good point, and this scares people, and it's kind of comical to me. But anyways, the XRP token also reacts less. Hmm, interesting why it reacts less, even though its market capitalization is less than Bitcoin, so it should be more volatile, just like silver is more volatile, but it must be suppressed, which may reflect that its network of trusted nodes is centrally controlled by its issuer, Ripple, making the XRP token distinct from other permissionless cryptocurrencies. So we know, again, XRP Ledger, permissionless. RippleNet is a permission database. Type of blockchain, technology infrastructure, I should say Ledger, not blockchain. Um, excuse me. <clears throat> but Ripple basically decides who the validators are, okay? Because they're working with banks, financial institutions, like central banks. So this seems to be making sense for me. All right. And so people kind of get freaked out about this, but I'm not going to argue the distribution or, you know, mechanism for consensus. I'm here to get an ROI and make money off of true utility. All right. So again, this was Dallas, the Federal Reserve. What's next? right here so we're happy to provide our customers with new digital alternatives for sending money when they need it most so king solomon again we're going to be talking about this which is really funny here so we're going to be talking about ria they are RippleNet partner they're huge we've talked about them before i just want to show you this screenshot again we know moneygram strategically acquired to an extent the acquisition with ripple and ria took steps in that direction earlier this year by partnering with blockchain specialist ripple inc in August, Dallas-based, so also Dallas-based, which I thought was funny, MoneyGram announced it was using Ripple's X Rapid, which is XRP. And again, now it's called on-demand liquidity. You can see MoneyGram chairman, CEO as well, or I guess chief executive Alex Holmes. He's talked, he's been on a lot of podcasts talking about XRP, loves it, all good news. And for some reason, I guess Bitcoin holders or Bitcoin maximalists, and if you hold multiple assets, that's awesome. I just... You know, when you do not know what you're talking about and you kind of try to diss XRP, that's when, you know, it gets a little silly. But moving money across borders is complicated. Our partners are collecting and paying money on our behalf to our customers, and we have to set, settle with them every night. So you have to understand, guys, they're already settling, by the math, well over a billion dollars per year in XRP payment flows. What is Bitcoin doing in terms of working with regulators and true financial institutions and banks? I'm just saying that this is a real use case. People that say yeah, they're not using XRP, that's a complete joke to me. I'm not listening to you know some random guy on Twitter. All right. Now, now talking about Ria briefly, Ria launches now this money transfer app. So across Europe, Ria, RippleNet, Ria, a subsidiary, a subsidiary, subsidiary, whatever, subsidiary of Euronet Worldwide. Euronet Worldwide, <clears throat> RippleNet. Sure, it's just another coincidence, but this was an awesome find. One sec, I need some water. <clears throat> but all right, so right here, 
We can see Rio Money Transfer launches its Money Transfer app across Europe, Global Newswire. We can kind of read a little bit more about that if you guys would like. Again, launch in 13 countries by June. All right, throughout the European market now. We already know, I mean, there should be, you know, it's kind of funny if you guys even question this because we're already connected with Temenos, which again is a banking software, 3,000 plus clients at least. You can look into tips. You can see throughout the entire Eurozone, we're really at the foundation of all of the, you know, I guess you could say payment stack or settlement technology. All right, how to send money with Rio, money transfer app. We can see 402,000 locations, 3 billion bank accounts. All right, this is Rio's network, guys. Thanks to the latest, you know, E electronic KYC. This is no your customer uh, technology, including biometrics. And again, DLT is going to be huge for even digital ID as well. New and existing customers can create an account and start sending money safely within a matter of minutes. So again, the Rio money transfer app is going to be available or is available in download on the Apple Store and Google Play. All right. It's all right in front of you. <clears throat> Man, I've been talking for a while. I feel like, um, you know, I covered, you know, most of it. I highly recommend you guys continue to do your own research. I mean, look, even right here, Zemo, another RippleNet partner, World Remit, digital transactions. Okay. I should probably find this document. This seems interesting. But, um, I mean, it's all just right in front of you guys. I don't know, you know, what else to show. I highly recommend just looking in the Nacha. Um, a lot of the links now actually don't work anymore. So I do find that to be interesting. Um, sometimes when I find something and I have shared in the past, I think it was last year, I tried to go back to the original links and they've been taken down entirely. So I don't know, maybe it's just, you know, typical updates or, uh, something's being hidden, but that's just me with the tinfoil hat. So don't want to over speculate guys, but okay. With that guys, I think I'll call it a day again, just as a brief summary, we talked about Swift and the cross border payments. And I'm just talking about a global bridge asset, the underlying infrastructure of the payment stack, solving a problem. And yes, XRP needs to be used. There's not another digital asset, a walled garden token. We've gone over every single scenario on why that will not work. All right. Talking about the IMF, naming this type of XRP thing could be a coincidence, but I thought it was interesting. Exchange rate peg. Looked at the document, talked all about Lian Lian, American Express, talked, you know, again, groups backed by Tencent. It's just, you know, crazy. And people are questioning it. FIS, you know, World Pay. Right, we talked about Kuwait now sending it with Turkey and the Turkish lira. We've talked about again <clears throat> Brian Brooks with further regulation, working with the entire U.S. banking system. Mnuchin's buddy, Craig Phillips, etc. Um, it's just all right in front of us. All right, Federal Reserve. Just trying to get this information out there so people are more informed because I'm learning every day with you guys. But just remember when you know XRP absolutely moons. In my opinion, not financial advice. I just believe that. All this information is here, so you know don't call those that invested in XRP lucky because this information was right out in front of them. All right, so not on the news; it's not going to be talked about. But if you actually dig and do your own research, you're going to see it was all right here this entire time. And remember, the electronic network—that's the backbone of U.S. payments. Fix domestic, get the RTP real-time payment system, all good. Look at the tech providers; literally the same ones that work with Ripple and their customers. And then we work on international cross-border payments and what asset are you going to use that is highly liquid no counterparty risk can be automated scalable extremely cheap remember <clears throat> when 50 million dollars was sent it was a matter of pennies in terms of cost it is simply a matter of time so with that guys i appreciate it and i will see you in the next video